It was Mother's Day, 2014. My mom collapsed on the floor. We didn't know what was wrong with her. Me and my sister was like, I don't know what's wrong with her. We got my mom to the hospital and the next day they were like, she's terminal cancer. She's gonna die in like a couple days. And we were like, what? Hey everyone, welcome back to On Purpose, the number one health podcast in the world. Thanks to each and every single one of you that come back every week to listen, learn, and grow. I am so grateful to all of you that lend us your ears and your eyes every single week because you're making this possible. Our On Purpose community is amazing. And community is something at the heart of what we're going to be speaking about today. Now, today's guest is someone that I've been connecting with, messaging with for maybe the last three years now, and we've been dying to be sitting in the same room so we could actually have this conversation. I can't tell you how excited I am. And I've been talking to her for literally just a few moments, and I'm already excited for you. I'm talking about none other than actress and entrepreneur, Alexis Wren. Alexis, thanks for being here. Thank you so much. That was so cool hearing that, <laughs> and then being here, like sitting in this chair with you and listening to that introduction. I'm so honored to be here. Oh. Actually, I've been thinking about it this whole week. Like, I've looked literally from like 18 up until now, I've looked up to you and the people that you've attracted into your life, and then to be one of those people you've attracted. Whew, my heart's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> that is so sweet, honestly, because when I found out that you you were going to come on the podcast and that we connected and I wanted you to come on, the fact that you wanted to come on, to me, it was amazing, honestly, because we we used to live in the same building. Yes. And we used to bump into each other in the gym all the time and you used to bump into my wife. And I'd the, just be like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi, I love you. <laughs> oh, you're the and you just bump into my wife in the elevator all yes. the time. I was like, nice sweater. <laughs> yeah, and, and you just, you know, I've also been following your journey and you probably didn't even know that. No, I had no idea. <laughs> and I'd been following your journey and I've been so, honestly, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, been so blown away by your activism and advocacy for mental health awareness. Thank you. Your work for women's empowerment. Uh, the beautiful community that you just launched last year called yeah. We Are Warriors, which we're going to talk about today. Yes. Like your work is so beyond what many know. And yeah. I'm so glad that I get to sit down to help you share that story because I really think that, and, and I felt it only today, you just have this amazing energy that surrounds you wherever you go. And so I want you to know that. Thank you so much. I feel like I um, one of the things I do is I like spread myself like very thin because I feel like um, I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this. There's like so many different lives I want to live that I just dabble and then I don't give like I, I, this year I've been like, let's just focus on one thing at a time. I'm like <laughs> that's kind of like what my team is saying. And so I'm like, I'm I'm focusing on one thing at a time. But it's there's a like, as you know, as if you been following my journey, I've I have just so many different passions and loves. And I also like like there's just so much to fix here. Like to, I'm just, I'm like, oh my God. Like the second I was like, looked around. Cause you know how like you're kind of in your head. And then at one point you're just like, oh, like you're like early twenties, like, whoa. I was like, if you don't, if you don't feel you have a purpose, I can point out five, like, right. Like there is so much that like just needs service and help. And, um, I, when I first, I, I almost felt paralyzed when I like first saw how many, well, one, like, on the mental health aspect, just like uh, our relationship with our parents and like how that stems and how we just continue this weird cycle and how can I help break these cycles so we can create like new beliefs, new patterns and help heal, especially for females in general because we've been suppressed, but just in all aspects of what are healthy relationships, what is normal? Because the normal we've been living is not healthy. So what is the new normal, right? So it's just like going into those subjects. And then of course, like I'm like, earth, <laughs> oh no, I didn't even know. I'm so sorry. And like going into like plastic, the plastic, plastic pandemic and like, and then learning the, like how the thing that has blessed me so much, social media has actually been hurting so many people and, and that I've, the, out of the girls that have been following me and it like broke my heart. Just like, there's just so many things that broke my heart and those, it almost like when my heart broke and I was like, well, there's a path. And then I just would keep like put going through those things. And, and then I, you know, I, grew up as a model and that was like all I knew. And so my self-worth was very much on like, well, I'm pretty. And that's that's my offering, like I'm pretty. And so I felt very um, scared. 
because I was like, I want to just like reach my hand out out of this box that I've been in. Um, and there was a lot of back, you know, people being like, why does she have anything to say about any of these topics? But I was like, can we all just talk about them then? So like, it's okay. Cause there's just a lot. Um, and then that's, I, I would just, it was almost like, I would just like step kind of like a, a mermaid coming out to like, you know, just like <laughs> stepping, like I can, I can turn into human. I can speak on different things. And so just finding my way through the puzzle. My, my God sister always says this and I believe it. She says, there's no problem only puzzle pieces and like just mm. trying to figure out what goes where that's been like a series of last couple of years been very interesting i love that we're going to talk about each and every one yeah, of those as, because you've just shared so much with us and and i want to thank you for just your vulnerability across the whole time like you've always never been scared of just diving into what your heart cares about mm -hmm. and i think that's beautiful to see but let's start with what was alexis's first passion ever when was the first yeah. time you felt that passion, that interest, that curiosity about yeah. something back to when you were tiny, like whatever age you want to go to? Yeah, I mean, so I was homeschooled my entire life. I've never set foot in a classroom. And so that really gave me the opportunity to just like go deep into like my own creativity. Um, and, you know, it was, it was the three three girls all being homeschooled. So there's a lot to handle my mom. Are you the eldest woman. or the youngest? I'm the middle child. And your parents decided to do this with three girls. My mom, my okay. dad was like, okay. <laughs> my mom was like, I'm doing this. Um, she was very, um, I feel like the term woke is very much overused, but she, back then, like, I mean, she homeschooled herself through college. It was very, very different back in then. It was just not um, accepted. I spent so much time being in front of the camera, like creating music videos, like it was all I wanted to do. And because I didn't, I wasn't around, the only people I was around were the people that accepted me. I just went full force into whatever creative thing I was doing. And it was really interesting because my mom, she was obsessed with being like, what are you interested? And then we'll learn subjects based off of that subject. So for instance, I fell in love with ballet. That was my first, I would say that was my first passion. And she was like, hey, we're gonna learn history through ballet. And so there was just this like um, desire to learn that I was just super accustomed to. And so when I would talk to my friends being like, oh, you're going to school, what are you learning? And they would just like roll their eyes and like hate it. And I didn't understand that because I was like, that's what we're here to do is learn. <laughs> like, and it's fun. It's like so exciting. So I was very blessed to have that kind of an upbringing. Um, Your mom's genius. And my mom. That's oh my amazing. God, dude, the longer, the more in my adult life I, I'm getting, I'm just like, my mom was so aware. Like it's, cr and, and I, I'm like living, we'll, we'll get to that part, but like I'm, I'm living for her now as well because everything that she, all of her beliefs I'm fulfilling and like hopefully just like carrying it on carrying her legacy but with ballet it was it was a love at first you know because you're a little girl you're like I'm gonna dance on the cardboard box and like <laughs> I would like perform little things for my mom is that the ballerina voice yeah I don't know what voice that is you're gonna hear that voice it's brilliant. a lot yeah I've been hearing it like in our conversation. I love it it's well, great I don't know where it comes from but <laughs> um and so my mom was like okay you want to do this you want to do ballet so I studied for 15 years i'm still studying now so i would say now 24 years now i've been studying but like wow. it was I, I stopped around 16 because um i mean first of all just shout out to ballet because that were if anyone is who is a dancer is watching this like you you guys know the type of work ethic that you're taught we also know the trauma that you're mm -hmm. you're given so um it's a it's almost like a wand and then a sword at the same like edges because my work ethic is out of this world. All I know is how to put 100% myself in. And that's what ballet taught me. I had this really strict Russian teacher, Yuri, shout Yuri. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and it was just, I was constantly like, please, I just wanted to please, like, please, please, please. And so I got into this deep people pleasing habit. Um, and that stemmed from my first passion, which was very interesting because it bled into everything else that I fell in love with. Um, and then it almost like, and this is so interesting. And I, I was just reflecting on this with a friend last week. It reversed all of the work that I'd done in my homeschooling years to create my own identity. And almost, because it's like, if you're constantly like, mm, do you like what I did? I can do it different. Let me know. <laughs> like I can be better for you. Um, you start to lose your identity. And so that happened so deeply to the point in ballet um, that I, st I still remember the first moment where I was in ballet class and it was just, I was at a breaking point. 
Um, cause one, I think around the age of 16, 15, you can kind of tell whether or not you'll be accepted into like a company or something by just the way your body is made. And my hips were never that flexible. And I would always like just hurt myself to try and get myself there. And it just never worked. So one time in class, my teacher was just like, just grabbed my leg and threw it to the back and was like, no. And like yelled at me so hard. And my, like Wait, something in my, you. he like, she, he like threw, I, we, I was on the bar and he just took my leg and threw it to the back. And he was like, no, like, no, Alexi, no. And it just broke my heart because I was just like, I can't do this anymore. I love ballet so much, but I can't, I can't, this is like ruining me. And so it was very interesting because right at that moment where I was like, I don't think that ballet is for me on the level that I wanted, modeling, I was scouted like literally like within a year and a half before I quit ballet. And then that was a new path that I was like, I can do this. Like I can smile and like, uh, you know, like I can, this is really fun. And I remember, um, I got signed first time. How first old paycheck, were you I was I, 14, wow. 14. And it was like 15 was around the time I quit ballet. Yeah. I was like 15. And then my agency was like, so do you want to go live in Tokyo for six months to a year by yourself? I was like, sure. <laughs> like my mom was like, well, I raised you. So sure. You know, <laughs> like if I can't trust you, then I don't trust myself. And just like gives you an idea of how amazing of a mother mm. she was. So it was like, it almost went, I just, to, to bring this all back around, my passions, I grew up so quickly from all of my, it was just like, you're an adult world, you're an adult world, you're living on your own, you're an adult world. So by the time I was 16, I was, I already felt like I was an adult, an adult. Yeah. An adult. And, it, and it felt amazing. I was like, mom <laughs> everything's amazing like i'm doing i'm doing all the things that you want like here's a new dishwasher like yeah i got you like whatever and so it, i felt on top of the world around 16 i was like finally got my life like it, it just was working out so beautifully i was working every day and i was like and not to go through my whole life story but this is kind of an important Please. um story moment um we're here for it when i think it was mother's day 2014 my mom collapsed on the floor and I was like very, con I didn't, we didn't know what was wrong with her. Me and my sister was like, I don't know what's wrong with her. We got my mom to the hospital and the next day they were like, she has terminal cancer. She's going to die in like a couple days. And we were like, what? And like, I think anyone knows, like, especially females with their mothers, like she was my first reflection. So like I... I didn't understand. I mean, you you don't understand death at the at that age. You're just like I'm too close to beginning of life mm. to understand death, and that was crazy. So I think that almost because she she ended up passing away. Well, she refused all cancer treatment. She's holistic. She was a health, holistic health nutritionist, so she like refused everything. Everyone was like, "You're not going through chemo," and she was like, "That's gonna kill everything in me." <laughs> like, no. Which I, I I love her for that. She was just so powerful, and she was so stuck on her beliefs and. I mean, they said she was only going to live two weeks. She ended up living another like six to eight months. Wow. So that's like, I, I was like, I got to give it to you, mom. Like yeah. that, that's amazing. Um, and so I kind of, I got to learn how to live life without her while she was still there almost because she was like in bed. Um, but I didn't, I didn't quite understand how much I would lose myself from losing her. And that was like, I think it was like on top of the, the, the people pleasing aspect in each of my each steps in my career and then losing that reflection of just everything i wanted to be i almost had to like start again it was mm -hmm. weird i i still remember like being in my um car parking lot just like having this whole breakdown being like i have no idea who i am anymore like this is crazy um and so yeah <laughs> I just like went on a rant tangent, but that was like, I think a defining moment in like one, who I wanted to be, two, uh, how I wanted to serve. And then three, um, how, like, how could I, how do I break the boxes that people put me in? Cause mm -hmm. my mom was so good at breaking boxes. She was like, oh, you think college is the only way? Nope. Like, oh, you think like Western medicine is the only way? Nope. Like, <laughs> and so it was just, that inspired me to like, go down all of the paths that I'm currently now creating. So it was like crazy. Sorry, that was a really long tangent. No, it wasn't at all. Thank you so much for yeah. sharing that. Like, thank you for, thank you for sharing that, honestly. <laughs> like, ah, what's coming out of my mouth? I don't know. <laughs> because at, at 14, you know, you're obviously not making sense of it in that way. At 14, it's, 
it is the most heartbreaking thing that can happen to anyone at any yeah, age. Crazy. But to have it at such a young age and defining age and then losing yourself, where do you think that took you at that time? Today, it's obviously taking you to some beautiful, wonderful things, which we'll get onto. But at that time, you've mentioned the people-pleasing mentality a few times. It comes from trying to impress your ballet teacher. Where does that then take you? And how does that affect your so, modeling? Because that's the next stage, right? Yeah, I think with the people-pleasing thing, it's almost like turning it around and being like, now how can I harness this for myself, right? Because I know how hard I work. Now, can I not work for that? Can I work for me? Mm -hmm. So like that was like the switch. Um, and I've always found, and I was literally talking about this last night, <laughs> but I, I kind of, I believe, and I hope I can state this correctly, but how low you go is how high you'll go. Mm. And I keep seeing that in mm. life. Like if I'm, whenever like I hit like a low, like just patch, I'm just like, God, you own me. <laughs> like, what are you gonna do to like make this up? Like, let's go. And then of course it like, it'll launch me into a next pad. So at the time I didn't realize that, but I do think like the reason, like going through the passing of my mom and everything was, I literally just look, it's her wedding ring. But um, oh. the it was the reason I got launched into such like a, a fast, like, blessed like completely blessed life was because he was like okay <laughs> just wait I got I got you like I got you and now I can almost like with everything with everything I've done and like especially with we are warriors like that community was the manifestation like that's something my mom would have created right because when I went on because it was modeling and then social media started coming up and I just remember photos of me when I was very, very young, 15, going viral on the internet. And I didn't understand it. And I was working full time as a model. I didn't really understand what was going on. Tell us about that experience. Yeah, that was, that was great. I mean, I was, I was just so happy. I was just so, I was like, I'm working e-com nine hours a day, front <laughs> side back. Like I was just like, I was living a dr like my dream because I was financially independent. I could help my mom out. Like everything was going amazing. And then on top of it, I was getting this like this this attention that I never thought I would get. And so there was, it, it was, I think, 2013 or 14. And then 2015 hit. And and that was interesting because I had to, I, I went through my mom passing like publicly. So that was like, I think the first understanding that the second you share your vulnerabilities, it's almost like it's setting you free. That's why I'm so, I always, whenever I go on interviews, I'm just like, can I think new thoughts here? Because I would like yes, that. I love thinking yes, new thoughts. Yes. I don't, I don't like repeating, you know, I hate preparation. It like yeah. scares me. I'm just like, no, it's gonna ruin whatever's meant to happen. I so agree. I, I say that all the time. I and I hope I hope I help you do that today. But that's the same for me. If I'm ever being interviewed, I'm like, I want to say stuff that I've never said before. Exactly. Like, that's what excites me. It's like, can this be self? It's like you're in a room with a friend yes. and you're just like, hmm, I just thought of something. Yeah. What yeah. if? Like that's. My I love that. Yeah. Favorite. Well, please go favorite. there. <laughs> yeah. Go I, on any tangent you want to yeah, go. Let's, on. let's yeah. see what will come out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it was the modeling and then social media came along. Um, Instagram started blowing up. I started traveling with a, an ex-boyfriend of mine. We were super, super young. The reason we connected actually was uh, his mom passed away from cancer as well. So wow. we had this really deep connection. I would call it a trauma bond now, but yeah. it was um, very deep. And so we started traveling and, and picking up this attention. And so one of the things I can now look back at it as an adult and be like, well, I was trying to like put him in the place of my mom and he, I was trying to make him take care of me the way my mom did. And so it was just like, it was going, it was not going, it was not going to be a stable relationship. Right. And so, and then he, we, we just, we didn't know what love is. Right. I think around those times until right now, I'm still learning what love is to me personally. And so finding who matches that same um, understanding of connection. So that was crazy because I was, trying to replace my my mom with a guy and then it blowing up in the public eye. And so I just, I remember like, we like posted this video and then the next day it was like all over the news and I was just like, what is happening? Like, I don't understand. And then people are like, we're calling them influencers. And I was like, what? What does that even mean? I didn't, I didn't understand. Yeah, didn't Cause exist. I was like, I'm a mo like I've been a model my whole life. And so it just, it blew. And I honestly like, I can't, I, I wish I could tell you more about what happened during those years, but I think, I, I've fully like disassociated. Like, you know how like with trauma, you just like, I, yeah. I've disassociated like between like 2015 to 2017, I was, I don't really remember much, but it was, in, I just remember how quick everything happened. And it was just like playing this, it, it was my first time, uh, I don't want to say it was my first time acting, but it was my first time playing a role. 
And I was like, this is interesting because I feel a lot of pressure to be this perfect thing all the time when in fact I was actually the complete opposite. And that's why I man- I, I manifested this this character I was playing online because I wanted to be her so bad because I was a wreck. And and I, I came to a moment where like the relationship wasn't going well. Um, the traveling was too much on my body because we were going, we would spend like three days in one place and hop around. Like, it was just like the most insane, filled up a passport in like two years. So it was a lot on my body as well. And I just remember it was my body that gave out first. And I've always, my mom always told me to listen to my body test myself, always say my name over again until I can hear myself again. Like all of those things she's taught me, but I forgot all of it. I threw ev- all of her knowledge, all of her wisdom Tell away. us some of those things. Walk us through some yeah. of those that you let go of because I think they'd be really powerful for yeah, people Yeah, okay. So one of the things that she always, whenever I would hang out with a friend, um, I would come home and she'd be like, are you there? I was like, what do you mean? And she was like, you sound like Sophia. Are you on Sophia's identity right now? Say, say your name. And so I would say Alexis. And she's like, say your full name. So I'd say my full name. And I'd keep saying it until I'd, I'd hear my voice drop like back into my identity. And then she'd body test me and she'd be like, she'd say, I am Alexis. And I, she'd push me down and my um, it just kept getting stronger. I do this with supplements as well. When I'm yes. holding a supplement, I'll hold it down and press it down to see if my body recip- like likes it or whatever it is. Um, she would, she was a firm, I, <laughs> she would um, play the secret in the minivan whenever we'd like <laughs> go on our errands. And I'm just like, what is this? <laughs> I don't understand. And she'd be like, we have magic, honey. And I was like, what? Yeah. So I was like, I want to manifest something. And you know, at the time, you know, I'm like 12 being like, I want to manifest a red ball. Yeah. And so I like spent three weeks trying to manifest this red ball. This is still like my favorite manifestation story ever. But like, I still think it's like my best accomplishment in manifestation because it was so like specific. I knew exactly what it felt. I knew what it looked like. I didn't know where it was going to be, but I just knew I was going to find it. And Three, four weeks later, I found it at the park and I was just like, oh, I like freaked out. And I was like, mom, this is the ball. She was like, what ball? I was like, the ball. I thought in my head when you said that we have magic powers. Um, so that was like, that was weird. I um, love that. So yeah, it was That's like, a, awesome. she was always just planting these like seeds of, she would never tell me what it was. She would just have me question whether or not that felt good to me, like mm-hmm. the the truth itself. She was like, d- d- how do you feel about us having, you know, powers beyond just our hands? And I was like, that sounds amazing. Yeah. And she was like, all right, well then that could be a possibility. Like, why don't you try, like, why don't we, mm-hmm. we practice this together? So it was almost like, I was like, um, we were like partners. So she was like my friend, I would say mm-hmm. more so than a mother, mm-hmm. which I wanted to replicate within all of my relationships, all of my friendships. Like that was like, she was so just so powerful in that way um but yeah no. amazing. Yeah. yeah sorry you you were telling i don't story know what i was saying but i like, said you said that at that time you let go of all of these things that your mom had taught you, oh, and, yeah. trained you and that's that's why i wanted to say so yeah so just like let it go i didn't didn't believe in magic anymore i didn't like it was um I like saying magic better than law of attraction because yes. I feel like that's been like overused, but I'm like magic. Yeah, <laughs> I like magic. Like, yeah, yeah, magic is way more fun. Um, so I got to the point where my body failed on me. And so I got super sick. I remember I was bedridden for like three weeks and I had an amazing support system. And obviously we all know how <laughs> special like our support system is. And I kind of was, I didn't see them at the time because I was just in this relationship. I was traveling. I, but they were always on the sidelines, like my god sister and my sisters and like my godmothers. I have so many godmothers. It's like actually crazy. And I'm so blessed. It's just like, oh, are you my mommy? Like literally like <laughs> it's, I'm just like, I love all the shout out guys. You know who you are. Um, <laughs> but they slowly, the second they saw that my ears, because my mom would always say, she was like, um, if someone's not ready to hear you, don't bother trying mm. to speak to them. Mm-hmm. And so they finally kind of came around and were like, are you ready to listen? <laughs> I was like, I'm ready because I was like <laughs> in bed. And um, that's when I started to really like I went through like deep. We ended the relationship and then I went through this crazy, I would say healing journey. It was almost like um, it, how, would, how would I explain it? Like I took myself through my own like retreat, I would say. Like I did, like I had things I would do every morning. Like I would journal, like take out the trash, just journal every morning, like get out all of my thoughts, see what my patterns were that created my identity and see then what patterns I wanted to hold on to or let go of. And so that was a lot. Um, and then at the same time, 
I was like, I want to go deep into this modeling thing. Like I want to do, I want to do this. I want to finally do what I've always wanted to do. I felt like I got sidetracked with so much traveling and it was exhausting me. And I felt like I was living in someone else's dream. Like I wanted to do this. And so I went deep into modeling and I was like super excited. I did Sports Illustrated and like all these amazing things. Um, But there was, but my mental health was getting worse. And I was like, what is happening? I don't understand. Like Alexis, I almost felt like embarrassed. I was like, what? Alexis, everything is happening. Why are you a a wreck? Like I was trying to hide it constantly with even Mm -hmm. my closest friends because I was like, this doesn't make sense and this is like actually ridiculous and I'm being dramatic so I need to stop. Um, To the point where my god sister, Allie, um, (laughs) Allie, Allie, uh, Allie, um, she was like, I think you, uh, she was like, you need to come to Hawaii. You need to come to Hawaii and you need to get out of Hollywood. You just need to like get out of this thing that's so attracted to the essence of you that is not all of you. Like I want you to fall in love with all of you. And so I went to Hawaii and actually lived there for nine months. And that was when I really went like, it was so hard. Like self-healing is not fun. No. It is not. No, everyone, (laughs) everyone's like the five minute journal. Like, how do you feel today? Great. Like, no, No, like I'm just like, Wow, I ended up falling in love with poetry because I would just like get so deep into one, the pain that I would almost find, I would get a high, this is weird. I'm sure artists and poets know this, but like you get like a high off of like seeing some, a pain in you that can be told in a way that everyone can, and you're just like, what, what? Like, and so I, I just like wrote and I was like in the jungle, I would, just spend all day meditating like we my sister would make me like go to a tree and scream at a tree and like just we like just going through the whole thing to almost like she she would she used the um she said she said to me one time she was like it's like an onion she was like we just have to take off all the layers that were put on to you like from literally the moment you got here she's mm-hmm. like i'm not just talking about like what you think is your trauma. She's like, I'm talking about everything because Mm -hmm. no matter what, it's like we get here in life and we're just like perfect. We're pure just experience. We're just here for the moment. And then slowly but surely we start getting like, well, this is how we should feel about this. This is how we should feel about this. This is what happens when we do this. This is our idea of love. And like, it just goes, 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 goes. So we went so deep into the healing to where I almost felt like a clean slate again. And the second that I felt that, Dancing with the Stars called me and they were like, you should, you should come back to LA. And I was like, what? It always happens like that. I'm like, as soon as you're doing your deepest healing, yeah, you get this like, like huge opportunity. Huge opportunity, yeah. exactly. And I was like, ah, uh, I don't know if I want to do that. And I was very uncertain because I'm, I'm, I'm always very wary when it comes to reality TV um, because, you know, they, they can just like change mm-hmm. things change and say narrative. things differently, like so, so intensely to the point where I'm just like, that wasn't even me. <laughs> um, but I remember, I remember one of the books I read, Simon Sinek, he was talking about the why. And I was like, well, if I can just have a why with everything I do, then I don't have to be worried about the outcome because mm-hmm. I had my intention. Um, and I remember it being one of my, my mom's favorite show on the planet. And I was like, <laughs> and so uh, I went back to LA and did the show and that was like crazy I got to dedicate a dance to her which was insane and like I was just there for the experience mm-hmm. I honestly to be honest I I actually didn't want to win I mean you get wrapped up in the competition yeah. but I was like I don't want to win I just like but I love that you did it because it was for your mom so like your mom loved the show. yeah it was so fun got to dance for her and it was just like that was a crazy experience so it's almost like and this is what I kept seeing and around this time I was questioning, what do I want to be for the world? This was around the time where I was like peeking my head out, being like, I don't have to, I, I, can I offer more to this world than just the way I look? Because they keep telling me that's all I have, but like, maybe I have more. Did, and Did you really feel that, that people would just, you felt that people's response was that that's all you have? Was that very like, yeah, was that I like mean, a visceral feeling? Cyberbullying is like a real thing. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. really, it's had tell me. Us, tell us about that because I think that you're someone obviously who's stood up for so many important causes. Like you're saying now you've had yeah. you know, cyberbullying, trolling, comment sections, whatever it may be. Tell us a bit about what you experienced and then how you found your way through it. And I get that yeah. it's an ongoing thing. Yeah, but- no, for sure. I mean, 
it was it was really helpful when I started to self-reflect because then I could just see the pain that people were inflicting onto me. And I was like, it's almost like if you're pretty, you can't be smart. You can't have, because it's it's too much. And then you're too much of a threat. And then it's like, that scares. And I was just like, it made me sad. So at first it, it hurt me because I was like, they're right. Like I would believe them. I'd be like, they're right. Like I should just, you know, stay in my lane. And then after a while, I was just like, no, the only way, and this is what I've been coming to learn with the community is like the only way I can authentically help you is to be that is that is I can't preach to you I can't teach you I have to be it Mm -hmm. and if I want everyone living and knowing that they're multi-dimensional beings and knowing that they can do so much at the same time then I have to honor and see that in me and that's terrifying because then that means I actually have to like stop leaning because they were right I was leaning on this thing of like what society was telling me that I was and so I almost had to like take off my like training wheels and just be like, you're on a bike now. <laughs> you're going downhill. <laughs> we have brakes. You've never used them yet. But like, this is what we're doing. And that's when I started to figure out like, no, I don't want to conquer the world. I want to like help it. And then how how can I serve? Because I've, whenever I, I think of my idols and just people who I look up to, you know, when I was younger, it was like the Victoria's Secret Angels. And now for me, it's like my godmothers. Like, oh my God, you guys are in like, actual warriors like true warriors and so why, why do you think that changes and and obviously uh, victoria's secrets themselves have gone through a massive evolution, massive evolution recently yeah. like but wh- why do you think that changes as you grow older because i think that's something that a lot of yeah young adults teenagers and then when you become an adult you you start looking at your family differently your parents differently their sacrifice well yeah because you start to i feel like you start to just like actually see them like you almost come mm. up to like the Oh, like you're not mm. just like looking up. That's my a good mom, experience. one of my things my mom implemented like in me was like, you're not, um, she was like, I would prefer it if you call your friends' parents' names by their first names. Just like do it and see how they feel. I was like, what? So I can call him Mark? <laughs> I don't have to call him Mr. You know, whatever. Mm. And she, she's like, he's like, no, like we're human. Like, let's, let's, I want you to be on everyone's terms mm. and I want you to see how that feels. Um, well, I mean, for looking up to the Victoria's Secret models, I still think like what they created back in the day was beautiful and it was it was art, you know? It was just like something to celebrate and it was a type of woman that we could celebrate. We can celebrate all types of women's, but um, I think it was more so their energy of like, I own this space that I'm living in. And it was it was new to me because I was growing up in a living situation where my mother was very much so like, let me just she's like it's like we're the water and she's the tub and she's like let me just like form to however you guys need um and so it's very much a people pleasing complex of just like i'm going to be everyone's everything and the perfect everything for them Mm -hmm. which ultimately is the reason why like i think her health declined because you can't sustain that it's unsustainable um and then there was a lot of things that i didn't see within her so i think for me heroes are the people that have are continually admitting why they're not almost, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just like, oh no, I, but not um, like still being like humble and stuff, but just continuously knowing that there's always something to learn. Mm-hmm. There's always something you don't know. Like mm-hmm. my mom always said, stay teachable, stay teach, always stay, you were, you never know. Like <laughs> the person who is like ahead of everyone else is the one that knows that he knows nothing, like is yeah. that kind of the vibe. And so, that's what I grew up in. And so that kind of energy I started to be attracted to more than just like, I own this space. Yes. It was more so like these, these, these people who would sit in silence. And like, that's when I really started getting into like podcasts and and reading. And I just went deep into that space. Um, because the stories, I mean, I think at heart, I've always been a storyteller. Like my whole life has just been a series of stories that I can. Well, your like mother put sounds in like car- an amazing storyteller. She's so, yeah. an, am- yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so, listening to people's experiences was the best way that I learned. Um, and then I started to look up to those people. So it just, it changed from like, this is the the image that I want to perceive to like these stories inspire me. And like, that's why this person inspires me. So it, it, it changes over time. It evolves. And like, thank God it does. Cause like, to be honest, it's exhausting. Only, only thinking you're known as your looks. Like that is like yeah. actually the most soul exhausting thing. Cause you constantly are in this state of fight or flight. And it is, like I've been starting to say this affirmation, I think I started about a month ago, but I always say like, 
my looks are the least interesting thing about me. Like mm-hmm. I always I con- I say that all the time. I'm just like, I don't, this, this is like not what I'm focusing on right yeah. now. It's not what I'm, I don't care. Um, like it's a tool, but I don't, that's not what I will rely on. Um, that's not what I want females to rely on. That's something I want them to celebrate in all image, all um, size of anything, celebrate it. Um, but it shouldn't be like a something to lean on. Like that's mm-hmm. the unhealthiness. And so when I created Weird Warriors, I can just like, briefly touch upon this when I created yeah I was I think around 2018 I still have it in my notes it was really weird I was like scrolling through my notes one day and I went all the way to like 2017 and it literally said in a sentence I want to create a community that I can talk to and help evolve like once a week or and then also like in all of my like like intentions of my notes it was like I want to help evolve human consciousness that was like one of them and it was just like whoa like I had no idea what I was saying like notes are powerful you guys like <laughs> notes <laughs> apple notes phone. has all the best ideas in the world of anyone in there i know mind. you never yeah. look back yeah. you're just like this is gold and you never yeah. look back yeah. but like when you do like you guys after this go through your notes like yeah. like go through your notes <laughs> like go through your notes i agree they're crazy because yeah. you'll see one like things that you manifest that you didn't even realize and mm-hmm. then two just parts of yourself that you're like i'm pretty cool like uh, <laughs> like i don't know i said that you know um so that was like the first i think manifestation of the company and growing up like in the fashion industry, I felt very um, p- like everyone was like, you could create this brand or you could create this clothing. And then, but like my my love for the environment, I was like, we don't need another bikini brand. Like I just, I this does not feel in alignment. Like this is not, so how can I create something that is meaningful, that does have a promise, but the, but the company itself is the promise. Like it's mm-hmm. not like a brand having a promise. Mm-hmm. And so I knew from being homeschooled that the education system is, you know, I would love to help reconstruct that or take that down completely. But um, <laughs> just saying, just, uh, saying, yeah. just we're, saying we're, we'll work on it. Yeah. We'll work on it together. We, we yeah. need to yeah. work on it because um, it's, it's so, it's so outdated and, mm-hmm. and not the tools that you will need. And, and it breaks my heart seeing, I think I was, yeah, 1920, I was seeing all my friends come, come out of college or drop out of college being like, well, that was a waste of time. And I'm mm-hmm. like, that's heartbreaking to me. Mm-hmm. That is absolutely heartbreaking to me. And like, how can we fix this? Yeah, it's like 18 years of your life. And your prime life. Mm-hmm. I was like, you can learn at any point in your life, but you're only going to be 18 once. And mm-hmm. so it's like, it's like experience. I would say experience more than be in a classroom, but, and it breaks my heart. And so I knew that I wanted to help on that level. I just didn't know what, I didn't know how. After like telling my story on Dancing with the Stars, I was like, storytelling this is like this is so much Mm. this is so much more me than anything i've experienced before and then what is what is versions of storytelling and i was like oh acting and the reason i never fell into acting is because i'm born and raised in la and so Mm -hmm. just like being here i'm just like well do i want to be like everyone else you know like it just it was everyone else was doing it and Mm -hmm. so i almost i wanted to go against the grain like as if mauling was a going against the grain (laughs) but like in my head it was um You were the rebel. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was the rebel. Um, but I didn't I didn't realize how much I loved storytelling. And I almost, and acting is very interesting. It's like used, it's a tool. It's used to either get closer to yourself or farther away from mm. yourself. And I love the idea of finding myself in characters because like we really are, we're a blank slate and then we build our identities and we're like, this is me. And so it's like the way Jim Carrey perceives it, I truly do perceive it as well. I'm just like, I'm so excited to like find new parts of myself in this character. And so I fall in love with it really quickly. And so that's when I was like, oh my God, I can't, why didn't I think? Of-? And so I, I went on to acting and I was so excited and everything was going so well. Um, booked my first film and every- and then everyone was like, hey, um, so there's this uh, thing that's, people are calling it COVID. I was like, what is happening? Yeah. And I was on set for my film and everything got shut down. Like I was in Oklahoma city and they were like, we have to shut down everything. I went to New York just to like go there for a second. It was a ghost town. It was, I was like, I've never seen this. And and I'm sure everyone knows what I'm talking about. So we don't have to go deep into it, but it was crazy. And I was tripped out and I was mortified. And I'm sure a lot, not mortified. I was, I was so, yeah, mortified. I was so sad Yeah. because I'm sure a lot of people felt this like, things were moving and like we were, it was, things were moving and girls my age, you know, 21, 22, 23, we're like at our stage where we're like young adults and like- Yeah, people were graduating. Yeah, like things are moving and like we're starting to really understand our career and that's truly what I felt and then everything just stopped. 
And I was so sad. And then at the time I was also going through a breakup. So it was just like this horrible, like I have nothing to distract myself from the pain of this lesson. And then also you have to let go of something that you now have fallen in love with. So it was like two things I fell in love mm-hmm. with that I had to let go of. And I was like, oh, God, easy. God yeah. you and then owe me. Global, <laughs> global pandemic around that. Yeah. yeah. And then it was like, I was texting my, like, are you guys okay? Yeah. Like, what's going on? So that was really crazy. And so my god sister, once again, was like, hey, you should come to Hawaii. Like, I'm here. I have Hawaii a is your place. It's me and, me and Hawaii have such an interesting relationship because she's like, you ready to come home? <laughs> I'm like, no, I don't know. I want to be here in Hollywood. And she's like, you need to remember. I'm yeah. like, no, I don't know. <laughs> and so it was like that again. And so I felt that happening again. Yeah. And I was like, no, I just went through this in 2000. I don't want to do like a rebirth. Like I don't want to, I don't want to go through any pain, even though I was already in pain and clearly I needed to go and, mm. and fix some things and, mm. and within Literally, myself. You got, yeah, you got to say, yeah. 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 Um, and yes, I went back to Hawaii and it was actually very, it was uh, it was amazing, but in the beginning it was very hard because I basically had no idea what I was doing. Um, no one did. I I felt horrible because I was miserable and yet I was in a beautiful place. So I and then I, that was like there was this guilt as well of not being able to enjoy it and and I didn't feel right complaining about any of it. But I was just in a lot of pain, and that's when I started to go back to what it, if I'm feeling this way, like who else is feeling this way and who else has been feeling this way for a very long time. And so We Are Warriors just kind of started. It just, it really, it, it's interesting. It started as a workout program. I was just like, I'm just going to create a workout program. But with this workout program, I'm going to be doing live calls every week with the girls to like, keep, like yeah. talk to them and, and keep updated with them. And I'm, it just, the first live call, it was very much about the workout and stuff. And then the second live call, we just started started kind of talking about like life and beliefs and experiences. And, and it, and I saw the opportunity that I had. I mean, I had hundreds of girls on this live call and I was like, this is the kind of change. And I think, and I've said this before and I'll, I'll say it again, cause I believe it so much. We think impact is like so much about numbers and mm-hmm. views. And, and if we don't have a million views on this video, it wasn't a success or mm-hmm. whatever it was. But in retrospect, that kind of impact does not work at the same of having 30 girls on a live call and yeah. I'm talking to them directly about their trauma and their experience. Like that, I know for a fact and like not to get in my head myself, but like it's just so powerful and yeah. profound. It's deep. It's real. Yeah, it's depth. Yeah, it's yeah. real. And like substance. I know that my conversations with that girl is going to help them be a better friend, a better mother, a better like everything because I'm helping change their fundamental beliefs and helping them work through their trauma. And so I didn't know that I could even do that. But because I went through my mom, because I went through all these things, I can look at pain as pain Mm -hmm. and be like, now, how do we want to approach this? What's the story you're telling with the pain? And then what is the actual pain? And so like separating the two and then figuring out how we heal both of them. It's very interesting. And so I felt... Um, like there was something there. And so I just slowly started to grow it. I yeah. Guess. What I love about that though, is that I, I think what you just showed there is sometimes you just have to start. Yeah. Like you don't, do you don't know exactly what it's going to be, but if you really care about it and you're present, it's going to teach you how it needs to evolve. Exactly. And now, you know, n- not to talk about numbers, but, but to show how much it's grown. It's like, you've got over 3000 people in over 70 countries it's and crazy. it's amazing. It's Congratulations. Amazing. Thank like you so much. When, when you first told me about that, and I remember seeing the articles in Forbes and just seeing the coverage, and I was just thinking, this is amazing. Like, this is so special. And today when I'm here listening to your background and your mother's coaching of you and schooling so of you, and, and I could see just how present she is and her wisdom is in your life sure. i'm so excited for you to be sharing her through this as well no, and that's what you said that this is what she would have done yeah tell us what about what 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 you're doing and you're like oh this is what my mom would have done like tell us a bit about that she has taught me that it's not about trying to help a thousand people it's like it really and this is so cheesy but like i keep saying it to the girls as well in the live calls i'm like you guys if you can just make someone smile in an elevator life will be a lot better like we're at the point where it's just like 
let's just enjoy this experience. Like I know that there's a lot going on and I understand that and we need to help where we can, but we're all suffering. And so we should look at that. Like suffering is like what we connect on. Mm -hmm. And so then how can we break through like the, 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 the veil? Like if I can just like crack a joke and make someone laugh, like almost like break the character of like, I'm just the guy delivering food. Like that's so healing. And it's like having it on, it's like you're fueling people up. So it's almost like you can be chargers for these people like you can. And so I am being chargers for the girls so that they can go out and then be chargers for everyone else. And so that's one of the things my mom implemented. She was the best listener on the planet. Tell us about the community more. Like, tell me a bit about like, yeah. you know, what are, what are the ways in which We Are Warriors is helping the community? What kind of yeah. sessions do you have online? What are the kind of themes and topics? What are the format and structure? Because I'd love for our listeners to get involved. Yeah. And I'd love for them to have an opportunity to hear about it from you. Yeah. So um, We Are Warriors, it's like a educational slash personal wellness community. So I think communities are are the future of social media, or at least I hope so, because then it's like a group of people having a common goal that they can accomplish together. And I I think like communities with goals is like a very powerful thing. And that's what I've been seeing. Um, And even being homeschooled, I was in a community of homeschooling, homeschoolers. So it was just like very powerful. So We Are Warriors, it's a set of different challenges each month. I like the idea of challenges because it gives us a finish goal, like a finish Mm -hmm. finish line. um, And it's exciting. And so for instance, like last month, and we, we tackled different subjects as well. That was one of the things, because when I think personal wellness, I think there's like a 365 degree approach. Um, and I do think fitness is a huge thing for girls, just having the motivation. Like fitness is like keeping up with my routine and my body has been the reason I am who I am today. And I understand that, but we like, we think of it as vapid. We yeah, don't think of it, agreed. but like it actually creates, it, it sets up the day for me. Mm-hmm. And so- creating a community where the girls could do that together was very special. So, but then I wanted to like expand on that. So like in April we had um, Nicole Lappin for the finance challenge to talk about like taxes and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to, I just wanted to take girls through courses that I know will help them Mm -hmm. that are actually going to help them. Yeah, And it's almost like filling the gaps of the education system. Like whether it is talking about like, we'll have a whole month on mental health. We have, Um, Right now we're in beauty month right now where I have like one of the top skincare women in the world. And she's like here having live calls with these girls, talking to them and coaching through them. And then for me, I can tackle more of like the spiritual aspect of like, well, why is this manifesting on your cheek? Let's Mm -hmm. look at that. And like having those deeper conversations where we can really tackle every essence. Cause I realized it was like, it doesn't matter if you work out every day. Cause if you hate yourself, it, it's just, it's almost like there's a huge wall in between you and your goal. And so It has to be both there. It has, you have to have the manifestation with the physical action. Um, And so I'm just, right now I'm just testing that with different subjects. Um, We, I want to have an environmental month where we have like different people come on to talk about things that are going on in the planet. Um, Not overwhelming because not something too overwhelming because what happened to me, (laughs) I went deep into the plastic pandemic and I almost got paralyzed. Like tell us, tell us about that. Like how, how can you get so, involved in something that actually paralyzes you because it's just that bad like if you i read i think over 10 books in the course of a couple months about plastic and kind of like what's happening and how we're basically finding it in pregnant lady and their placentas now because the microplastics and we eat a credit card a week and like it's 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 so scary that it almost it just like it i i didn't know i I couldn't even be me i couldn't even be happy because all i saw was that I was like, okay, well, maybe that's not the approach because what happens is like you paralyze and then you just want to forget about it. And so I, w- I want to like slowly like ease them in, not so much about the facts because the facts are really hard to take in. Yes, we'll talk about facts, but it's more of like, what can you, what are the little things that yeah. we can do? Mm-hmm. What what brand can we bring along that backs this, that can partner it? And then we can all just kind of get better yeah. together. Like is the vibe for me is like, let's just get better little by little together. Like it has to be together though, because- what I've seen with the girls is like, and what's cool about the community is like, they host their own live calls too. Like yeah. I'm not like, if a girl, for instance, we have one girl who's um, going to law school and she's like, anybody who like wants to learn about like law and or has amazing. conversations. And I so they'll have that. law, they'll have yeah. conversations. So it's almost like, um, I didn't want the community to feel like they're looking at experts. Yes, The goal is 
that they find their inner expert and then they Mm -hmm. can kind of like shine in their own Mm -hmm. live call. And that that's when I've seen the most transformation because they can actually put it to practice. Absolutely. Which like I don't I don't see school does for many people. Um, So that's the transformation that we've been seeing is just one, the connection that these girls have is actually crazy. I'm so honored to be a part of it and like facilitate the space for them to be all best friends. Um, And two, like the goal is to like create physical events and like really I I really think that entertainment and education should go hand in hand. Like it, I I don't under, I'm like, why do we have like billions of billions of dollars going into entertainment? And yet we can't add like 20% of that into like, just put education within the entertainment. Cause like it should be fun. It should be exciting. Like it's, like I said in the beginning, like it's what we're here to do is learn Mm -hmm. and like create, learn, create, (laughs) learn, create. It's just like this circle. (laughs) And so it's like, I don't know, finding how to re- reignite their passions is uh, for themselves like fall in love with themselves and then reignite the passion is really really powerful to me and then by helping these girls like I know that when they're they become moms they're they're gonna understand not to give away their identity because one of the things that I see in moms like so much of the time is they just like they just become mom and I and I'm like no you're still this girl before you were mom and you're still and I and I I think one of the things that I wish that I wish or I wish for all of this to help is to make sure that these girls continue on with who they are. And then it's like who they are. And then they're all of the subcategories, all of the characters that they play go below that. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause I've seen it too much in marriages. Like the, yeah. the, the, the female just loses her identity and then becomes resentful. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. what happened in my family. I've seen it way too many times with the people around me. I'm just like, how can, how can we heal this? And this is like actually an ongoing conversation in my head. So it's just like. Yeah, no, I'm really glad you brought that up. I'm I'm working on my second book right now. And I talk a lot about how, you know, in a partnership, in any relationship, the goal is to always help each other find each other's purpose. Exactly. Because if you're not doing that, like when I think about me and my wife, when I met my wife, I was quite clear about what I wanted to do. And she had loads of talents and skills, but didn't quite know what she was going to do with them. Mm. And over the last five years of us being married, she's really come into her own and she's really growing and flourishing and thriving. And it's been beautiful to watch. But I fully agree with you that it's, you can't think that, oh no, but your purpose is just to do this or your purpose is just to look out, look after the home or your purpose, even as a, whoever the role is, doesn't matter what gender you are, but the idea of, oh, your purpose is just to make money for the house. Mm-hmm. Like that's not a mm-hmm. purpose. Like we all have so yeah. much more to do. So I love exactly. that you brought that up it's, it's because you exciting. get lost in your role. Yeah, you, you, you get lost in your roles. That's like a yeah. real thing. And that's what I'm learning from acting as well. I was like, don't get lost in your roles. Like, don't do that. Like I've, I've like, heard <laughs> people do method acting that have actually lost relationships in the real world because yeah. of that. Mm-hmm. And so when yeah. I hear that, I'm like, wow. Mm, exactly. Well, it's a, it's a great example of what we do in real life as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, because I do think like at some point with like a long-term relationship or friendship, whatever it is, it's like you choose mm-hmm. to have them come with you. Mm-hmm. And if you're not choosing that, then the relationship didn't work not because it was like you didn't bring them along or they didn't or you didn't see where they were going and wanted to come with them it is as much as like we love the butterflies and we love all that this is a team partnership yes like if you go we go yeah you know yeah, yeah. Like, we go and, and, so, and you can't be someone's purpose no like don't try and make it like no. no i am your purpose like what i do is your purpose and my purpose is the same as yours it doesn't work it doesn't work like no. that like you can't project your purpose onto another person and expect them to just want to live for that right exactly exactly and this is all of these things i've been learning recently like in the last Mm. couple of years especially with like going through like so many public relationships and having that be oh god public relationships are terrifying oh my god after i was like I'm good. <laughs> after after my last public relationship, I was like, I'm good. I'm so good. I'm going to just be me in my <laughs> own little world. <laughs> no one gets to know. Um, because not only are you creating roles in the relationship, but now you have the public mm-hmm. creating characters of the people mm-hmm. that you are. So it's mm-hmm. like you're fighting like you're it's like you're having conversations with like four different versions of the person you're dating. And you're yeah. like, oh, my God, like. 
and so, half of them aren't even real I know. yeah <laughs> i was like it's like a foggy mirror you're just yeah. like hello um so that's been really interesting and then i always feel that relationships are the best reflection as to where you are right because they're mm -hmm. just like i'm just your walking reflection mm -hmm. right now that's why we're in this together right so i i always get excited when i because i'm starting to just meet so many amazing people and i think that's like what i've been learning as well is just like there's no there's no villain anymore mm -hmm. it's like we can stay together or we can leave in good faith and good heart and like it's just it's not you know in high school you're just like they broke my heart <laughs> what <laughs> Um, now it's just like, all good. Like you, you did me a service by leaving because you were being disservice to me and you for staying because yeah. you didn't feel. So it's like, at the end of the day, it's all perfect. Like, what can I, it's all perfect. Yeah. And then trusting that, like. What helps ooh. you trust and accept that when most of our minds hold on to the, but it could have been like this or, it, because I feel that's what it is, right? It's always this battle between imagination and reality. Hmm. And a lot of us prefer our imagination, yeah. but then we have For to, <laughs> yeah. And then we have to deal with reality. And I, oh, I read something. Actually, I want to read this to you yeah, because yeah. I think you'll like it. Oh, wait, let me find it. Let me find it. I have to read it to you because I don't want to mess it up. You know, it's, it's you know, when you like you try and say something, you mess it up. It. So this is by Johann Wolfgang. And he said, few people have the imagination for reality Ooh. and i read that and it literally like it really Ow. that's like there's Ow. something that's it packs a punch right i was like few people that's have me. the imagination for reality and i was thinking wow wow like i think my imagination's good but if i had a really good imagination i'd be able to accept and trust my reality well you're kind of like i'm a great storyteller and the universe is like <laughs> sit down <laughs> sit down you can tell it later once it's over you can say it's yours but it was mine like that's like fully like what i experienced that's beautiful all the i love time. that you know it's like sit down like you you, you write it while i create like you know yeah. what i mean like yeah. you remember it you tell the story it's it's ours you know but it's mine yeah. but it's ours you write i'll edit yeah. yeah and so like that's kind of the relationship that i always see and per your question earlier imagination and reality it's I always, at this point with heartbreaks, there I don't see it as heartbreak anymore. I see it as growing pains. Mm. And that's sometimes even worse because you're just like, I was I was good. <laughs> I was good with just this. Like I didn't, I didn't, I don't want to grow. Like I'm good. Like I'm tired. <laughs> I just want to like watch Netflix and chill. Like I don't want to evolve anymore. Even though I like just got here in retrospect, but like it's still. And so if I look at it as growing pains mm. and then, you know, as, cause we're all artists, we're all artists. And so what I'll do now, and it's actually so intoxicating is I'll create, I'll write poetry, I'll write music based off of the experience. I mean, we know all of the biggest artists in the world are like, let me tell you about my heartbreak. Mm -hmm. And then they get, they blow up because of that. And I'm just like, that's in all of us. Mm -hmm. And so every single time that I have a new experience of heartbreak or it's just not working out or whatever it is, I'm like, there is so there is gold in this pain. There's gold in this pain and I cannot wait to get it out. I'm just yeah. like, Woo! <laughs> so I get, ex I get this weird, like I get heartbroken, then I get really excited. So, and it goes back and forth. It's almost, um, and I always, I always tell people, I'm like, when someone leaves your life, it's okay to feel like you're grieving a death because mm -hmm. the character that they played in your life is not there anymore. Mm -hmm. And so you are grieving someone that's no longer there. Like you are, like when I get broken up with, with someone I truly love, and I'm crying and I'm in that space, it is very similar pain to when I lost my mom. And so like, I always reach when any time, like my girlfriend comes to me and she's like crying and sobbing, I'm just like, this shit is valid. Don't worry, like feel it, like feel it because you lost a character that you thought was in this season, but it's not. And like, you thought he was gonna be your season finale. He's not, but it's all good. There's a season 60, there's a season 40, like, you know, there's so many seasons in your life. So it's just, coming back to oh so if he, if he wasn't meant to be here then what i attracted was more parts of myself i became more me because he came into my life and that is the biggest blessing i could have ever asked for like i am a product of everyone that i've dated and i've and i've found i've fallen in love with them and then those parts that i fall in love with i've like i, mm -hmm. I like i took them for myself mm -hmm. and so i almost I'm getting to the point now where I don't grieve it anymore because I'm like, well, the person that I was in love with, 
I became. Mm -hmm. And so that's so interesting how- Even if that person wasn't them, the parts that you thought you fell in love with. Like how powerful it is. Like relationships always fascinate me because I've always been a relationship girl and seeing how much people grow after relationships, it's like, (laughs) I mean, you guys have ever seen like, don't break a girl's heart. Do you know what I mean? Like it happened. I just, I just watched my sister do this and I'm just like, <gasps> she's going to be so good after this. Like I'm so excited. Like I get so excited for her. Cause like, I just like, I love it. <laughs> Upgrade. Like uh, yeah. you, girls get hotter. Like, it's just like, it's such a vibe. I, I get, I get so excited. Cause we need, it's almost like, um, the fire. It's like, mm-hmm. it, it breaks her heart open so you can light fire. And I'm just like, yes, like let's go. So it sucks. It always sucks. Um, but once again, like back to that same belief that I had, like the more he pulls you back, it's like a slingshot. He just mm-hmm. like launch you forward. So I just, at the beginning of 2020, I was just like, oh, this is painful. <laughs> this is painful. I wonder what's going to happen. And now it's like, I can honestly say I've helped more people than I ever would have man- imagined. Mm-hmm. And I'm also like playing with this belief. And like, I think all companies should is like, can we just like stop this idea that like, a company or a brand living forever is success because it's just, it's not mm-hmm. like, it's not sustainable. Things evolve. And so I always tell myself, I'm like, whether this company stays, whether it does, that's not the point. That was mm-hmm. never the point. The point is, is I've helped, I would say over now, like 10,000 girls mm-hmm. truly like actually help them, like speaking to them, talking to them one-on-one and that I will carry with me. They will carry with them. Like that's good enough. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's almost like, this is good enough. It's okay, it doesn't have to last forever. None of these things have to last forever. I feel like we're so, in in companies in general, even though this is a community, but like companies, it's like, we're so thirsty to just be the monopoly. And I'm like, no, yeah. what, what is this world gonna look like if we're all trying to be monopolies? We can't. Yeah. Like, are you good? Are you safe? You have a roof over your head you can host people? Like, you're good, yeah. you're good. Like let's, now how can we return the faith and, and do more? And it's like, so I, that's kind of where I'm at with We Are Warriors is like it will continue and it's going to be amazing but the impact is already there mm-hmm. and I'm so honored to like do have that impact yeah. on them you know it's just because yeah. it's so real no you sh- I'm so glad that you're owning that yeah, and I'm accepting like- that because I, I couldn't agree with you more I think we're fascinated with longevity and lasting till the end and even in relationships, you stretch it out far longer than it needs to be just yeah. because we think end means failure. Failure, exactly. And, and you're so spot on that the impact, the end is insignificant, really. It's it's all about what's happening right, right now, now in this place right today. Yeah, and, forget and, it. I'm like, it's right here, fam. Yeah, if you're making it's an sorry. impact. Yeah, yeah, if you're making an impact on all of these women today and they're impacting each other and you're empowering them to also become their own experts and discover their skills. I mean, that's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, And I'm so glad that you made that point because I think our, our obsession with making something last is everything. Yeah. It's unhealthy. It's unhealthy. It's unhealthy. And you're only 24. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Which is amazing. Like that's, that's, that's the insane part here. I feel like I'm speaking to the (laughs) oldest soul in the world. And then I have to remind myself and it's that's that's such a wonderful thing because you know you're carrying your mother's energy in such a special way yeah it's no it comes through it's like it's it's so clear yeah that that you know and it's cool too because like for anyone who's lost someone y'all have a speed dial up there like you guys can just like i literally am like mom and she's i (laughs) she's right there and so i'm like you have the strongest connection to the other Mm -hmm. side or whatever you believe. It's really, truly whatever you believe because I'm pretty sure all this is made up. I mean, we're just like, I'm sitting on an idea right now, which trips (laughs) me out sometimes. I don't know, like it's weird. Um, But it's like, we have such a deep connection to the other side because we have that person on the other side. And so I I utilize that as much as I can. And whenever Mm -hmm. I forget, um, I just like, I'm like, how can I remember? How can I remember? I think that's where I am right now. I just, I, I will... Um, it's always the environment too. So like I'll do incense, I'll make lights, candles, and I'll just sit down and I'll remember. Like whether that's just sitting in silence, it's helping me remember, but, or just writing until something else comes out. That's what it's, or talking to a friend about it. Like I, I think I'm at, and I think we're all at that point where it's not, it's not so much you're learning something new. It's almost, you're just remembering 
what was already there on mm -hmm. top of everything else per mm -hmm. what my sister said about the onions and just unraveling it. And so um, it's constantly coming back to that. But like, I still, you know, I still suffer. Like we all <laughs> suffer. Like it's all good. It's all good. It's all Definitely. good. Definitely. Yeah. How, how have you got through that? You know, you talked about this earlier and I think you've experienced this. Like you've, and, and I love what you said because we were, we were connecting on this beforehand and I, I sometimes feel the same way because I thought I was going to be a monk and that's literally what I built up. So before that, I had so many passions, but my parenting was ignore the passion, do the safe thing. Mm -hmm. And so my passions were music, my passions were spoken word, and my passion was philosophy. Do you still write spoken word? I do, I do, yeah. <laughs> I it's it's such so. a passion for me. And I feel like a lot of my videos and a lot of my content is still wordplay and and has so much i still use this spoken word in a different way today exactly and so that's so much a part of my life but it was like do the safe thing and so i was studying business and i thought i'd be an investment banker or a consultant or whatever any of that stuff and then i became a monk that became my dream and like, mom dad <laughs> yeah literally like from all of that to that but even letting go of that i would say i'm most myself in what i do today yeah and being a monk was part of that, but it's not all of me. Mm -hmm. And being in media, which is belt. what I am now, is not all of me. It's yeah. a part of me. And then being in the world of business was a part of me. It's not all of me. And I think you are so right that we limit ourselves. We feel society limiting us. And we feel we have to choose to be one thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that the fact that you're 24 years old and you've allowed yourself to continue to do this and you still do today. So, so I think crucial. that's so wonderful because I think a lot of people stay stuck until again, hold, wanting to make something last. Yeah, wanting to make something last. And like every single thing, and I, I will say this with absolute certainty, like every single thing that any of you guys have been doing and that you feel like was the thing and then it's not, it is serving. Yes. What your thing is like ballet. I spent literally 20, almost 20 years every day, four or five, six hours a day. I would be on point and my feet still hurt, you know, <laughs> like it's just like, but because of that, it's translated into storytelling. I know how to use my body. My work mm -hmm. ethic is insane. I understand. I know how to take direction. There is, I know how to feel when I move. Like it is literally service me in everything I've done. And so it's just, it's almost just like being okay with. Mm -hmm letting it go but then you don't actually let it go it's always there that's the mm -hmm. thing it's like it's always there serving you yeah um and so that's that's how i feel with pretty much everything i do my mom said another thing my mom said is like she goes um just be passionately curious mm -hmm. because put so much pressure on us so my mom would always just be like just be curious mm -hmm. like just like follow your curiosities and if if it doesn't lead you anywhere just be like oh that was interesting and then go over here and so that's that's what I do and like given I, I do I still of course have big dreams but like I let my curiosity take me mm -hmm. like and I don't the the big dream is not the goal it's like the little moments that get up to it yeah. right right so like when I'm when I'm having a director meeting and I'm like talking to them about a role or whatever it is it's like my intention in that call is to make the director feel good, not to get the part. Mm -hmm. So just like having those little indirect of like the wow, curiosity. Wow, that's such a huge like, thing you just dropped. Yeah, you have to, that's you a have huge to. thing. It's who you are. It's who all of us are. It's like if you can stop going, well, this is my goal to like my intention. I think intentions are actually mm -hmm. the most underrated, most powerful things I've ever, mm -hmm. like I still learn about how we have an intention 24-7 with every sing, everything, single thing we do, we just like, sometimes we're aware of it, sometimes we're not. And mm -hmm. so when you can put an attention, an intention on something before you do it, it's it's crazy how powerful it is. So it's like, I always make sure because at the end of the day, and this is kind of what we're all looking for, I think even more so than the diploma, than the thing and the degree, is someone that we connect to, mm -hmm. someone that we feel close to, someone that we almost feel like we've already met before. Like that essence comes from the intention of making that person feel connected. Mm -hmm. Not from, I hope I'm right for this, I am hope I'm this. And so like I, whenever I hire from my company, that's my intention. I was mm -hmm. like, I don't really, I don't care where you went to college. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, why course, would I care? Course, yeah. Why would I care? Like I care about who you are. Mm -hmm. Like what, like what's your, like what's your intention? Like mm -hmm. how are you going to be fun to work with? Like, are we going to, cause ideally I want you to be in this for the long run. And so do I want to be talking to you for the next five to 10 years? Like, what does that look like? And so having that perspective on when it comes to jobs, when it comes to meetings, anything, 
ever is like the human connection should go first no matter what no matter how bad you want it like the human connection is first um that's actually been the best like magic trick my mom taught me (laughs) because it's like it it always it always provides what i need and then what the other person needs so for instance i was like very excited for this role that i almost got a couple weeks ago i was very excited i won't say any names and he was so sweet and we were talking, we were having such a good time and I really understood the character and it was really great. But then, you know, because I don't, I'm not very experienced in the space, he was like, we're gonna choose someone else. And I was like, that's completely fine. But then I was sitting in meditation and I had this urge to write him an email. And I didn't, I didn't know why, because my goal wasn't necessarily to get the part. I just almost felt like the the connection of me and him wasn't finished. And so I just sent him a thank you. And I was like, thank you so much for speaking, giving me your time, like learning about me because mm-hmm. who I am matters because you need to get to know if I fit the care, like all of these things. And because of that, it almost solidified our relationship and that, but that wasn't my intention. My intention yes, was just yes. like, this isn't over. I don't know why. And I'm just yeah. going to sit down and see. So like listening to almost like letting it overpower whether or not the, mm-hmm. what happened, it's like, if you don't feel like it's finished, like go in there with the intention that you want to just solidify the mirror mm-hmm. that you guys are reflecting towards each other as opposed mm-hmm. to like the opportunity that's kind of on the sidelines. Yeah. Um, so that's been a huge tool. Huge. It's like actually like the probably the reason I'm here to be honest. <laughs> so shout out tool. <laughs> shout out tool, did you say? <laughs> I love that. Today I've discovered how funny you are, which is oh, great, right. which is really awesome, which is really awesome. So I, I love that. We're going to have so many <laughs> memes made out of this interview for oh, you. No. <laughs> There's going to be so many great ones. Oh, uh, no. Alexis, is there something that I haven't asked you about that's like on your mind? You're like, I have to share this. I want to say, I want to say this uh, before we go into the final five, but I want to know if there's anything that you're feeling intuitively as you are. Just thank you so much. Like, actually, thank you so much. I'm going to get teary eyed just like saying it, but thank you. I feel like, I don't know. It was weird. Like once I finally solidified this podcast with you, there something like clicked inside of me and I was like, oh. <gasps> Like I am becoming the person I want to be. And like I, and so just like, thank you for showing that to me. Cause it really, I, I'm not, yeah, I just thank you. I have no, I just like words don't, they don't, they're not it right now. So, but thank you. Yeah. So just, that's it. That's all I have to say. I love that. Yeah. I love that. That means the world to me. And, and I'm, and I'm hoping that that synergy and synchronicity continues. And, you know, this is the beginning of a great friendship. So that's 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 my hope. I, I I really believe that. Honestly, the podcast for me has either been a place where I had a lot of relationships offline that people didn't know the types of conversations we were having, and so the podcast was a great way of me sharing. Hey, I'm really good friends with the person. This is what we talk about, yeah. and I want everyone to hear it. And then it's also been the opposite, where it's been like, here's someone I'm really interested to get to know, mm. and I wanted to start a friendship. And, and then so it's, it's like perfect. Yeah. And so the, the podcast for me has been so much more than, and it's what you're saying about a community more than a company or a brand. Like the podcast for me is not a show. Like that's, no. that's not the point of it. Like it's, it's a, it's a way I can get to know humans that I'm interested in or I find interesting and help people learn about them. So actually I should be thanking you mm-hmm. because, you know, I think sitting down with you today has just completely blow my mind and open up my mind to just so many possibilities as to how someone who's navigated so many stressful situations. And I think the closer you get to it, the more you realize how hard it is. So when I was a young kid and I grew up in London, I knew no one in the entertainment industry. I was not in LA or Hollywood. Everyone in my area was, you know, not going off to work in anything to do with the world I'm in now. And because of that, you look at people and you go, oh, well, life must be easy for you. You guys have money, you guys have fame, uh, you guys are attractive, you, you, life, why are you complaining, mm-hmm. right? And as I've got closer to the industry, closer to the people that I coach, that I work with, clients of mine, I've only just had more compassion mm. for everyone, mm-hmm. uh, both the people that are like me sitting back there judging and then both the people who are in the situation because I just realized we're all just feeling some type of pain. And the more we can rise to that point without judgment, the better it's going to be for us because we can evolve together. Yeah. If we expect anyone who's 
successful to be always happy, then what we're saying is when I become successful, I have to always be happy. Mm -hmm. And that pressure, pressure is just- Right back on us. It's interesting yeah. how that works. And it's almost like, um, yeah, anything that we direct outwards is an exact manifestation of what's going to happen inside of us. And so we have to be so careful with our words. Like, I don't, why do you think they call it spelling? <laughs> spells like i'm like wow that's that's good i've sometimes. not heard that before i like that that's it's good the words are like i am oh my god mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when i hear girls say like i am ugly or i am i'm just like no I, mm, no like you can no I, I refuse to let you say that about yourself because you would never say that about your daughter you would never say that about your friend and so it's it truly is like having these honest conversations with anyone at any level has been eye-opening to me. And that's one of the reasons why I've always loved the podcast so much because I got to actually just see the person and mm -hmm. not the characters that I see them play mm -hmm. in life. Um, so that's really, it's really inspiring. And then also knowing that pain happens on any level, like pain is pain, you mm -hmm. know? Like mm -hmm. me losing someone from a breakup is just as painful as me losing my mom to death. And I was like, that was a weird, that was weird. I was like- And you almost feel guilty. Wow, or like You feel yeah. like, can I feel that? Or do I allow myself to? So it's like, yeah, validating on any level because that's actually what connects us as well. And, and, and I almost feel like until we, um, we have, the goal right now is to, to connect at every level of being human. And then from there, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure like an evolution would happen, which would be really cool. <laughs> That'd be really cool. I'd be like, whoa, <laughs> can you imagine if we had everyone at the same time be like, love? Yeah. <sighs> can you That's imagine? Like, that would be crazy. I've yeah. heard, I'm sure you've like heard of those stories where like, um, they have like monks praying at same, mm -hmm. at the, mm -hmm. all at the same time, like 3000 monks or whatever. And like the crime rates goes down in the city. I've, mm -hmm. I've definitely heard, I've seen studies yeah. on that before. Yeah. Same. Um, but just those kinds of scenarios would be like, I think that's. The, I, that, that's what, that's what my work would ideally, my like heart work, I guess, is what it's there for is mm -hmm. to like have just moment, more moments of like just people being in absolute like love. And even when I can facilitate, like we were talking about hosting and how like, it's like, yeah. why have the big house if you're not putting everyone in it, like hosting <laughs> it? Like, why do I have a balcony? I'm not going to do anything on it. Like, I'm going to have all my friends like there and like host people. And like, why do I have more than one bedroom? So I can let my friends be there and like just hosting and having that environment where like we come together and bring like real connection. It is so it's it's helping the planet so much more than we know. I've got two more questions for you before we go into the final five, because okay. I've got I've just there's so many things I could talk to you about. Uh, the first question I wanted to ask you was around your passion for acting now. Uh -huh. So, you know, what right now is making you so passionately curious about acting? What is it about roles? What is it about your development as an artist? that connects you so much to acting it's it's almost like proving to myself how many different pe person or identities i can be i think it's like we almost I, I feel even though i seem outgoing i'm actually quite terrified all the time <laughs> um and i would say i'm like an ambivert like an in between mm -hmm. but when it comes to acting I don't have a choice mm -hmm. like I have to show up as this person mm -hmm. if I'm nervous like it doesn't matter and like once I'm not thinking about lines once I'm like in that state where I just like haven't memorized to the heart and I can just be there um it's it's similar to flow state I'm sure you've written mm -hmm. I love, read flow, all, state, I love yeah. flow state was, oh, yeah I love flow, flow state. state is the goal yes for everything <laughs> always <laughs> so it puts me in flow state basically. Mm -hmm. I don't, there's no time. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. I'm not thinking about myself. I'm not thinking about my body. I'm not thinking, there's, n it's just, I'm just here. Mm -hmm. And like similar, similar to the way, like when you surf, like you're on a wave, it's like, it's those like 30 seconds of just like, I blacked out. I wasn't even there. No, like, and I you're saying out. that you can actually surf. So you've actually had that experience. <laughs> <laughs> like most people use that analogy, but yeah. we've never yeah. surfed. So, but you okay, actually surf. Like, but anything. Yeah. Yeah. Just like any. Like, but you can actually surf. Yeah. I yeah. can surf decently. Not yeah. good enough to the point where I'm like that guy in the surf being like, where'd you catch my wave, bro? Right. I'm like, but just those moments. Like, I think I'm right now. I'm just searching for those moments in my life. Like, I'm just like, when am I, am I going to forget time here? Am I going to forget mm, time here? And so mm. acting is just one of those things that I've seen is such a powerful. And also it's, it's the best because I can, I get to lose track of time with another person. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, like connection is so strong for me. And so 
it's like I remember oh my god this was such a cool moment on my first set um it was an older actor he's been around for a long time I'm sure you know him I don't remember his name but he was very very kind and we had a scene together where he was kind of just like um like getting in my face about something um basically saying that I like wasn't worthy or what I don't know and I was just like I got this I got this (laughs) I got this scene don't worry guys um and he was like getting in my face and I just remember a moment where like we like lost I just it was I just wasn't there and he wasn't there and it was just a pure moment and I wasn't acting and I was actually feeling everything. And then mm. afterwards he comes to me and he looked at me at, at Crafty's, <laughs> the little uh, yeah. snack area. He was like, you get it. He was like, you get it, don't you? I was like, yeah. And he was like, keep doing it, kid. Like, keep doing it. It's, oh, it's amazing. That's awesome. And he was like, you get it. And he was like, there. He, he almost, it was almost as if he like said like, you're closer to source mm-hmm. in those moments. Mm-hmm. Like, and so he looked at me like, you get it. Mm-hmm. And I just flipped out after because I was eating banana being like, I get it. I get, I get it. it. I get it. I get it. And so after that, I was like, okay, this is like what I meant to do mm-hmm. now for now, I mm-hmm. guess. And like, we'll see where that goes. Um, but yeah, I, I just, once again, like the intention, the paths change, but the intention stays the same. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think that's I l- what keeps me. That, again, love that. I just love that. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. I think that's been the challenge for so many people. We try and keep our path the same and then. But, but we don't know our attention. Yeah, we don't we know our attention. attention. Yeah. yeah. But, but keeping your intention the same and yeah. the path changing. Oh, I can so relate yeah. to that. This. So back to those notes. Yeah. Like any intentions that you guys have, like any of it, just write it down. So at least you just know. Yeah. You just know. Because I forget my intentions of all course, the time. Of course. Yeah. You have to repeat them daily. I repeat them daily in my prayer, in my affirmation at the beginning and end of the day. I have to. Exactly. Exactly. And then from there, it almost like, I, I, and this is, this may be a weird belief, but I've been seeing this a lot in my life. All the best things in my life, I didn't work for. Mm -hmm. And I keep seeing that as a pattern. I'm like, "Hmm, maybe God, maybe God doesn't want us to struggle. Like the way, like it's because everything that I've struggled for wasn't meant for me. Mm. So that's been really interesting of almost being like, you take the reins. Like mm. you take the reins. I'll create the intention, but you create the story and like I'll trust the path. And like whatever that is, like let's go. Like yeah. let's make it fun, right? Mm-hmm. Cuz like mm-hmm. I I do feel like the more you can give to God to like if he if he gives you like a ball, a red ball for instance, <laughs> like <laughs> like if you have fun and you're playing with it, he's going to be like, "Oh, he's she's playing with it. I'll give her something else." Like I'll, and it's just like it's almost like entertain like show him or show mm-hmm. the universe that like you're so stoked Mm -hmm. of what it gave you that it Mm -hmm. wants to give you more. Like Mm -hmm. you almost, you know, and like you have, I have a puppy, her name is Angel. And whenever I give her a treat, she's so stoked that I gave her a treat that I'm like, I gotta give you another one. (laughs) And so like, I almost feel like that's, and then when I walk my dog and she like is not leash trained yet. So she'll just be like, (gasps) like choking herself out, trying to like go everywhere. And I'm just like, is this what I look like? (laughs) Is this what I look like? Oh no. I learned so much from dogs. Also when a dog, my dog is obsessed with a ball, one ball in particular. It's gross. I can't believe she still has it. I'm just like, oh my God. Um, so obsessed with this ball. And I'm like, that is amazing. And literally her only goal with this ball is to give it back to me so that I can throw it so she can ta- catch it so I can give it back to her. Shoot, there's, there's no point to this mm-hmm. whatsoever. And so it showed me, I was like, do it just for the act. Like, mm-hmm. don't do it for like the the idea the goal or the mm-hmm. dream just just do it and so like yeah. whenever i play ball with her i practice that i'm like i'm acting just because it's fun because i just do it or i'm creating this company because it's fun and i mm-hmm. just and this is just what i do like mm-hmm. i just it's just fun and like because every single time i've gotten caught up in like the huge image of things is like when i've lost sight yeah. of my heart's path and i'm just like oh. yeah so yeah. But the greatness isn't within that path like for sure but it's never like the same path as you would see because it's literally just you playing with a ball and you're just like what's the point god yeah but he's like just wait like just keep doing it for fun yeah <laughs> so, yeah like, keep doing it for fun just keep doing yeah. it for fun and so i almost and like now that i'm 24 i'm i'm in this adult life and i'm just like do i need to get serious now <laughs> you know like it's weird. don't don't do it i don't want to it's a trap <laughs> it's a trap and yeah. so but it's so strong you i feel it heavy on me now I'm like, yeah i need to schedule i need to wake up at this time and God's like, no, you're not lazy if you sleep in. That's a belief. Let's get rid of mm-hmm. that. Like, no, you're not. Like, did you? No, it's just literally I am now taking off layers that I just got. I'm like, whoa, what is this? What is, and now that I'm coming into my mid-20s, I'm just like, what? It, 
is this not supposed to be fun anymore? Because mm-hmm. like, that's what I've heard. And that's what I like see a lot of yeah, the times. Yeah, yeah. But I just refuse because it's so inspiring to meet. I have a few friends that are like, I would say like in their 50s or 60s and they're like children. Having like, the best so time of their having life. Having the yes. best time of their life and everything works out for them. Yeah. Everything works out for them. Yeah. And I'm just like, that is, if I'm going to tell a story, I'd rather it be like that. Yeah. I've added play back into my life so much. Like play is like one of my number one values. That's why I got a dog. In life, yeah. You're going to the park. Yes. Not for the dog for you, but you're going to the park. Yeah, I just want more play in my life. And there there was a beautiful quote by Richard Branson where he said that, you know, you don't stop playing because you get old. You get old because you stop playing. Mm. And and I love that because it's it's been so big for me. I'm at a place in my life where I'm like, I play is a huge value. And it sounds insane. And people don't get it. I just got back from Miami. I was there for two weeks. And we were on a really busy schedule. We were working from like 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. Oh every single day. But at 9 p.m. every day, we'd go and play paddle tennis from 9 to 11. Yes. And I felt like a kid every night where I was just waiting to be out on the paddle court. <laughs> and I was just like dying to be- Have you ever played paddle tennis? Okay, it's amazing. It's, <laughs> it's, I, I'm the biggest advocate of this sport. Battle I've introduced tennis. many. It, but, but play is just such a big value for me it's, now. Yeah. And even when I'm with friends, I'm like, what can we do that's playful? That's playful. Like we've been, I've been doing crazy things with friends, like archery and like painting lessons and whatever it is, because I just want to play. You just want to play. And it's, it's where we create new passions. Play is where we create new passions. So also boredom. I I always am like, boredom is so valuable, especially now with our phones Mm -hmm. and like all of this instant gratification. And we've heard a million times and it's all known now, but like for real though, like I can't even drive without being like, don't text and drive, but look at all these billboards. Yeah. You know, it's weird. I'm just like, they're telling it and it's just all of this is t- trying to, everything is trying to get your attention. Everything is trying to get your attention, like to the T. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, okay, how do I work against this? And it's only going to get probably more intense, I would assume so. Um, so that's like, literally, I'll say it again. That's why I got a dog. That's like fully <laughs> why I got a dog. Because I was like, I need something that's, I'm going to get bad news on the phone. I'm like, okay, bye. And then the dog's just like, (laughs) you know, okay, here. So you know how like in any like Disney, like movie, like Pixar, whatever, there's always a sidekick. Yes. Tangled the chameleon. Like there's a bunny in the abominable snowman. Yeah. There is always like this really funny, comical relief. Olaf in Frozen. Olaf. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Spirit animal. Um, I was like, I need to. I want a sidekick. Like I want that idiot that's just like running and hitting a wall while I'm trying to like do business. Like I can, we need that. Like that's we need so that. cool. Yeah. So like movies are so powerful in the way that they like kind of they give us characters mm-hmm. to like mm-hmm. replicate. And so I've almost like whenever I watch a movie, I'm just like, I like that character. Like that character is really cool. Mm-hmm. Like one of the shows that I actually like loved growing up with was Entourage. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I've got a funny story to tell you about Entourage. Oh my God. So I was a monk when Entourage was famous. So I never watched it. So I didn't know what it was. So my wife just made me watch Entourage. So we literally just finished it. It's one of the best shows ever. It's, it's so amazing. Good. Yo, yeah. I would watch it. I, I would watch it again. I loved it. <laughs> I literally just watched it this year. So. Exactly. And so it's like you have like the characters around you that are just yeah. like, they're, they're so needed and you yeah. don't know why, but they're so needed. Like they're so important to the story. And that's yeah. how I look at all of my friends. I'm like, you guys are so like creating your, 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 your show. Like is yeah. like, and in a healthy way, of course, because, yeah. but it's taught me a lot. Like as much as Hollywood is very um, toxic and, and, and dangerous in ways, but it's also a great way to get to understand how you want your life show to go. Like, mm-hmm. it's just like, I can find parts of myself in different, like, uh, have you watched Dave yet? No. Oh, Rats no, no, I have watched Dave. I watched the first season, not the second Gata? yet. Yeah. I need a yes. Gata in my life. Yeah, like yeah. he's so funny. I was just like, he's he's yeah. just like, he's there always making jokes, always there, always holding it together, always holding strong. Like you need that per and sometimes it's you that's that person. Mm. But I always that really helps me just like understand the 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 thing I'm yeah. doing. So but the sidekick thing is like actually you guys, like <laughs> it really helps. Like I can't tell you how many times where I'm like so upset and then Angel like rolls over, it, it falls off the bed, like just I love it. The, the funniest thing. It's just amazing. <laughs> 
I love it. All right, Alexis, I'm going to take you through our final five. Okay. These are the fast fives. You have to answer them in one word to one sentence maximum. That's all you can say. <clears throat> Okay. So you can do. Use I actually one. didn't even read these. You can. No, 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 no. You didn't I, read them. Yeah, no, yeah. no, no, no. You shouldn't. I didn't. You shouldn't read them. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. So the first question, and I, I changed them on the day anyway. So it doesn't matter if you do read them because I just ask what I want to ask. Okay, let's go. Okay. So question number one is uh, what is the best advice you've ever received? I would, I would just have to bring it back to what my mom said about being curious instead mm -hmm. of passionate. Mm -hmm. um, it takes the edge off of so many, Great. Um, so much pressure. Yeah. It's just like, just be curious and stay teachable. Be curious that. and stay teachable. Awesome. Great answer. What's the worst advice you've ever received? Like you can only, I would I'd say like you can only be one thing mm -hmm. in a life is like, mm. I've just been learned, I've just been it's taught so much that like, you're an accountant mm -hmm. or you're a lawyer or you're and and now we're living in a world where it's like you can be all of those things you can be all of those things and so i just saying like oh you can only be one thing in life is probably the most wrong thing anyone's ever said to me for sure that's a great answer great answer all right uh third question in one sentence explain what is your current purpose or intention mm. i think my intention currently would be, I almost want to say in this, and it changed honestly this week is to just share more of myself by, by learning about myself publicly, I would say. And, and it's usually because a couple months ago, my intention was like to help evolve consciousness in whatever way. But now I really feel like it's my, and I hope this isn't taken the wrong way, but, um, I'm just really excited to to share myself. Like mm -hmm. I'm, I've worked so hard to be who I am, mm -hmm. and I'm not like afraid nor scared to say that I love myself. Mm -hmm. And I'm really honored to be who I am. And like I'm gonna continue to work and continue to be better. But like sharing more of myself without the fear of rejection would be my intention. And so like in all aspects of vulnerability, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a beautiful answer. Thank yeah. you. I love that. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. Question number four is what's the biggest lesson you've learned in the last 12 months since launching uh, We Are Warriors oh, for yourself? Oh, yeah. Um, for myself? Mm -hmm. I mean, for myself, I would say um, you are what you've always wanted to be. Mm -hmm. That's re that's really weird when you like, when as soon as you decide you want to be something, you already are that. It's Now it's just about proving to yourself that you already are, but you already are, like you already manifested it. And for like the girls, I would say, um, I've learned a lot about teaching and mm -hmm. how that works. Cause mm -hmm. I've always been curious of like, how do we teach kids and how do we keep it to stick and, or keep it sticking when they yeah. learn it? And like that, um, the best way to teach is to be the example. And we've yeah. heard that so many times, mm -hmm. but I've had to personally step up as a mentor and show that it's not about me listening to a story and being like, this is what you did wrong. This is how you should evolve. It's like me being like, hey guys, so this is usually how all the live calls are. Hey guys, so today, this this happened to me this week. Let's talk about this subject of letting go, but knowing when to let go. Mm -hmm. And then ironically, every single girl in, in the live was like, I was feeling this way too this weekend. So there is this like innate connection of like, if you can grow from each lesson that happens the day or the day up and then just like be present with the experience and then show education in that way, um, that's when you can help people evolve the quickest, I yeah. believe. Yeah. I, I think I'm just like at a speed thing, like let's evolve like quick. Yeah. So you have to be it. I love so. it. Awesome. Fifth and final question. Okay. If you could create one law in the world that everyone had to follow, what would it be? Uh, you have to go outside at least an hour a day. I think would be because that's in what nature. I'm doing in nature. Oh, yeah. In nature, barefoot, preferably. Um, one to, to just Hawaii. acknowledge it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> to acknowledge it, yeah. um, and also to like grow a love for it, to like mm. care, to see it, um, and it's also for your health. I mean, we get like we're like, oh, why is our health declining? I'm like, when we're eating fake food, we're watching fake things, we're um, you know have we don't have the best air anymore because of even plastic itself. Like, there's a lot of things that we have to combat now our water is not that good like there's so many things that we find invisible but it's like always there and so making the most of it even if it's 
to go sit on a rock, <laughs> talk to an ant. Like I've done very weird things when it comes to nature, <laughs> but like, it's very like. What's the weirdest thing you've ever done? I'm oh, asking you a sixth um, question. I'm breaking all my rules. Uh, what's the weirdest thing I've ever done? Talking um, to an ant. Well, one time I like would talk to a tree for like an hour. Mm-hmm. So that was weird. That was like. I was very outside of my comfort zone. Do you ever do it when you're like doing something so weird you get goosebumps? Yeah. Like, Alexis. For sure. Stop. Like, <laughs> for sure. But you feel like it's activating something. Like whenever I get goosebumps, I'm like, something's happening. Yeah. And so I just, I pretended the tree was like, like mother nature. I mean, I guess it is. I didn't pretend, but I pretended it was like you know Pocahontas <laughs> with the tree. Like that was like kind of what I was trying to go for. And I just like talked to it for, I would say about an hour. And it was the most like, Beautiful thing. It was also really cheesy and stupid, but I, I, it was, yeah, just having a conversation with nature herself was really cool. It's beautiful. Yeah. Everyone, Alexis Ren, that's your final five done. Everyone, if you want to go and join the We Are Warriors community, we're going to have the link in all of the descriptions, wherever you're watching this, listening to this, please, please, please go and join the community. Uh, please tag me and Alexis on Instagram, on Twitter, any platform that you're on to tell us what you learned from this. I love seeing, and we've been talking about being teachable and being curious. I'd love to know, we'd love to know what you learned, what you're curious about, what you're going to practice, what you're going to try out because of this episode. Alexis, it has been an absolute joy to sit down with you. Like this is, I was already looking forward to sitting down with you. I have to honestly say to you, and I'm saying this on air and online because I want people to know, this has exceeded all of my expectations and I was already so excited about this. So I just want to thank you for sharing from your heart, sharing vulnerably and with this comedic side that I'd never seen before. (laughs) So I, I loved all of it and I really encourage all of you to you know, just follow Alexis and see what's going on because I'm I'm excited for you. I'm so excited for you. Thank you. And Thank you. I am so looking forward to being a part of the journey and, I know, and admiring. Like, yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and cheering. So yes. I'm I'm looking forward to that. But thank you so much. Thank you, Jay. Appreciate you. it. Just talking about forgetting time. We've been talking for two hours. Whoa. That's cool. See what I mean? <laughs> really, yeah, and I love that. I just want to leave that with everyone. That thing that Alexis said blew my mind. Like it was really powerful. So she said something about, one second, there were two things now that, now that I was saying there was one thing, there were, there were actually (laughs) lots of things. There were lots of things, but there were two things. Uh, There is gold in pain. That really stuck with me. You said that there is, there is gold in pain. And the second one was that, you know, like being passionate or being curious about something is when you forget time. Mm Mm-hmm. And that was, and that's what we just did. Like, I literally looked down and I'm like, you've been here for two, like, we started recording about one hour, 50 minutes, probably one hour, 45. And yeah, we've, we've been talking for two hours. So I just want to say that. So thank you. If you want even more videos, just like this one, make sure you subscribe and click on the boxes over here. I'm also excited to let you know that you can now get my book, Think Like a Monk from thinklikeamonkbook.com. Check below in the description to make sure you order today.